Hey there guys, this is Obsidian Chill. Got another video for today. This one's actually coming from the test server. Now what I thought I'd do is kind of continue a series that I kind of semi-started in the past where I kind of give a breakdown, uh, and do in-depth testing analysis, kind of tips and tricks for uh, artifacts that are in the game. I've done it for the Amulet, the Claw, the Eye of the Gemini, Soul Amplifier, and kind of give you an idea of uh, is it worth it getting to 160, whether or not you should run it, how important it is just to kind of give you guys an impression of it. So this video is going to be touching on the Grim Orium Vernum. Uh, this is going to be from uh, the most recent DLC, Justice League Dark. Uh, this is obtained from running Shatter Gotham. Once you do Shatter Gotham, you get the mission. And then uh, there's a couple of feats attached to it too, well, just to level it. Uh, so we can kind of give a, a base overview here. This is going to be at 160. Now at rank 80, you get the Void Gazer, uh, Void Gazer 1, which is basically all it is is going to be the damage in combat from the pet. So when you, when you do... Uh, uh, I'll show in a moment here how you summon it, but uh, at rank 80 you only get the pet damage. Rank 120 you get the penetrating gaze, which is basically then the pet applies p uh, power interaction, which is listed below, which I'll cover there as well. And then at rank 160 the only difference is that the penetrating gaze is AoE. So uh, at 120 is only single target, so it only applies the power interaction to the target that you have selected. Uh, you can tap target and it'll set up other ones, but... Um, it only pr applies it on one target, where at 160, the only thing that changes is it now applies it to your target and everything near your target, so essentially making an AoE P uh, PI. Okay, so when you have the Grim Artifact uh, equipped, all you have to do, now it says uh, once it's summoned in combat, so if you just do one tap of a combat, it's not actually going to summon the pet, because you're not actually in combat. Uh, so if I was out of combat here, as you'll see, out of combat, and if I hit the target once, it's not going to summon. So it's basically the first tap or the first damage you apply while you're in combat. So if I did another take of damage, then it summons. And now it starts to do the, the beam, and it'll continue to attack until you get out of combat again. So I'm out of combat, it stopped attacking, it's going to disappear in about two seconds. And there you go. And that won't actually summon again until in combat, first damage attack in combat. So it's just uh, be mindful that, uh, say, if you're starting your rotation, something like that, and it's not uh, summoning right away, it's because uh, you're not in combat. So if you stay in combat, then if you're in combat, then it's always going to summon immediately. And the same thing as you might have seen in survival mode. Uh, if it dies while you're in combat, it'll immediately resummon at uh, full health, obviously. So you don't have to resummon it. As long as you're in combat, the first type of damage you do while you're in combat, it'll automatically resummon itself. Okay, so in terms of a damage comparison with the Grim Orium artifact uh, compared to others, uh, Robot Psychic is the closest damage comparison, uh, what people are more familiar with. Uh, so the Grim, the Robot Psychic range is single target because the rockets only hit one target, about 92k. Uh, the Robot Psychic melee, 156k. Uh, the Grim Artifact, same thing. Melee range and single target. Uh, it doesn't, uh, the range or the, how far you are from a target doesn't affect the damage whatsoever. It does the exact same damage. It does that pulse beam for about, I think about four or five hits and then it does the um, projectile sorcery burst. So it doesn't matter whatsoever what range you're in, the damage is still the same. So it's slightly higher than Robot Psychic at range. Uh, as you can see, it still has the chance to dip down below averages uh, depending on the parse, uh, but on average it is slightly higher. Uh, and then the Grim Artifact plus the Robot Psychic because uh, the Grim Artifact is a pet art, not a pet artifact, it's a trinket pet artifact. So you can have both at the same time. Uh, and as you know, typical, um, just add it together. So 92 and 94, basically around 180k. So essentially having both Robot Psychic, because not every power set is going to be able to have the Robot Psychic and uh, the Grim Artifact at the same time. Uh, but if you are able to, especially for precision DPS that have an extra loadout slot, having both pets at the same time, you know, it's an extra, you know, free 200,000 damage every 60 seconds. Uh, especially on boss fights that'll be remaining single target, so it's extra single target damage as well. Uh, so the, the, the damage from the pets itself, you know, it's nothing to uh, shake your stick at. It's certainly helpful. Okay, so the power and real benefit behind this Grimorium Burnham artifact uh, lies in that penetrating gaze setting the power interaction for powers. Now, the base values alone, the 4% might, 4% precision, is already uh, good enough to have it as a primary artifact because this is the only artifact. Solar Amplifier's got 5, uh, everything else has 3% might, and this one's got 4%. So base values alone, it's great from a might uh, DPS per one view. Um, now the issue is that, say if I, your power set uses uh, your supercharge all the time, like say like Earth or Rage, 
Uh, it gets a little bit tricky there because you still want Scrap of Soul Cloak for that supercharged regeneration. But say uh, right now, you might might sit uh, 42, 385. So if I put that instead of say like the Soul Amplifier, you know, then my might drops down to 41, 392, which is about a 1300 might loss. Uh, so it gets a little bit tricky from that. If you're not a power set that doesn't need uh, runs like Neo Venom or, or doesn't really use the supercharge that often, then yeah, drop the Soul Cloak 100% because the, the pet damage is still going to be worth it. Uh, as well as either Gemini for using a supercharge often enough, then the proc from either Gemini, of course, is going to be way more damage as well, so you can't really afford dropping that either. Uh, but in terms of, uh, like I was saying, uh, same thing for Precision. So Precision Sparring AI is 5%, Venomous is 5%, now you've got this at 4%. So for Precision users, this is the most important third artifact you can have as a Precision user, because it not only sets up the PI, which is most helpful for Precision DPS, saving a loadout spot, uh, but you also get that pet damage for single target as well as the buffed precision. So we'll kind of go into a precision example first here. Okay, so this applies just as well to uh, Might Quantum as well. Now, everything revolving around this Graviton Charge PI, so normally you have to set up either Gravity Well or Singularity, something like that, so you have the PI for these power towards Singularity going right there. Uh, so with this Grim Artifact as well, setting up Graviton Charge allows you to save a loadout spot as well. Normally, if you're a precision quantum, like single target, you're going to be using like um, you know Tornado Pull for the single target damage. But now you have the ability to use Lift for some extra damage because you're going to have the power interaction for Graviton Charge. And then basically with the power interaction on Gravit on Lift, it's going to set up a dot on all the other targets near you. So like say Satter Gotham and all those boss fights, if you want to maintain your Flurry Shot single target damage, now you can have some extra free add damage just because of the power interaction. So if we go... Um, Set up here, we'll have the pet out, so we're actually in combat. Graviton charge is applied, so now if we're doing like a furry shot, clip it with lift, same thing. So now I've got all that free dot damage just from lift. You know, it's, it's not that long with dot, but as you can saw, lift lift is almost as good as tornado pull in terms of single target damage, the same thing. You know, clip it with warp reality. Now imagine if it was like Shadow Gotham and all those eight targets, like say if I go over here to the eight target. Same thing, we'll get in combat. So let's say this is like Shadow Gotham. Um, now you've got Graviton Charge, all the adds in Shadow Gotham, same thing, clip with Lift, Warp Reality. Now you've got all this free dot damage that you wouldn't have had before just by running this Grim Artifact. So yeah, it's only a few ticks, but that's uh, all the damage that you wouldn't have had before because you're only running like Tornado Pull, or you have to change your loadout entirely because uh, you've got single target flare shot with a bunch of adds. So just something like that. Same thing with uh, with Might Quantum. You know, you don't necessarily have to have Gravity Well uh, for the Time Bomb interaction, because same thing, Time Bomb either works on Destabilize or Graviton Charge. You know, it just opens up so many possibilities of loadout variations to try now that you're, you're not ha you're not having to run Gravity Well, you're not having to run Singularity as a power interaction, because Quantum as a power set relies so heavily on them. Okay, another prime example of the part of fact benefiting a power set is Atomic. So Atomic, you've got Geiger Blast, which benefits from the Daze PI, but there's really no powers that's going to set up Daze. Uh, Unleash Shadow Matter is supercharged gender, but it does terrible damage. Radiation Shower, terrible damage. Some people use Sonic Cry to set up Daze as well, or just use Sonic Cry instead of Geiger Blast in general. Uh, but with a, the, uh, the Grim Artifact applying Daze for Atomic, Atomic Light and Gadgets, Basically, you get the free damage from Geiger Blast by doing nothing. You're still doing the same rotation, but now you're getting the bonus PI damage from Geiger Blast. So, so normally Geiger Blast, if we do the example here, so it's like, what's that, 10 1, 10 1 in the crit, you know, 10.7, 10.5, 10.2, 10 you know, 9.6 down there, you know, 9.9. .9. So now if we put on the Grim Artifact, so you can kind of get like a base. Uh, idea of the base value of what uh, it does. Oh, we'll take off uh, scrap. So now we're going to be in combat. Days is applied. Snow 11.2, besides the crits, not counting those. You know, 11. You know, 11.6, 11.5. So now, instead of getting 9s and 10Ks on just the average Geiger Blast, now they're all sitting mid-11s. So all the extra PI damage, uh, you're getting just free damage. You're not doing anything, you just have the Grim Artifact out. So you get the pet damage from Grim. Uh, most uh, atomic rotations of Robot Psychic as well. So you've got the Robot Psychic and Grim doing about 200k extra damage, and you've got the extra, like, you know, roughly 1,000 damage on each Geiger Blast that you do, not including the crits. 
So just doing a normal rotation for Atomic, nothing changes except you put an artifact on, and now it opens up all these extra possibilities. Light single target is another great example. Uh, normally with light, you have to waste it ability doing lightweight strike or spike quake, something instead of a daze PI. Um, now you don't have to. You can go straight into like a hand clap, grasping hand, heat vision, whatever your rotation is, and skip doing that, uh, having to hit that ability that doesn't really do great damage on single target anyway. So you've got Robot Sake, you've got the pet out, so you know once I'm in combat, daze is going to be set up, so now you can go straight into hand clap. Yeah, and just actually maintain your rotation. Without having to worry about setting up a, a daze PI, because you already have it set up. So it just opens up so many more possibilities for power sets to, to do increased damage because you don't have to waste a slot sending a counter action, which is always you know lower damage value power anyway. So really, there's there's so many examples to go through. You know, too much for this video. One video alone. Even you've got if you got ice, you got snow devil uh, having the benefit from the PI from frostbite. So you can just do if you're precision DPS, you go snow devil, ice bash, reflection clip. Not have to worry about uh, having a PI set up or a PI applicator for snow devil. You've got all that extra damage from snow devil from being frostbite. Uh, let's go into some other examples here. You've got uh, you got nature the void. So basically, uh, nature you have to have a um, a poison set up to be have roar the increased damage on roar. So now that this pet automatically sets a void poison, so now you could roar right away and have the increased damage from roar, the, at least one poison tick of it. Um, like I said, the, the ice example, uh, electricity doesn't really matter as much as well. Same thing with earth because you've got uh, oh yeah, earth earth single target was a perfect example if you remember from my guide. Uh, it was an issue setting up uh, crushed because there's not really like melee works okay because you have unstoppable but from a range single target point of view you have nothing set up uh, a crushed pi for upheaval uh, so now you can with the pet art with this grim artifact uh, with celestial you you normally would ha wouldn't have the pi for plagued and corrupted divine light so now you could start with plagued and corrupted divine light and have the the, um, the purified pi for that without having to set up divine light first like instead of having to go like divine light to corrupted plague you can start right away into plague to corrupted divine light and have that pi same thing you saw the examples with uh, atomic and light gadget doesn't really matter because you have the pis regardless uh, and, and you really want an electrify PI for days anyway. But it's just so many examples and so many opportunities that you have uh, to change your loadout completely around this artifact. So it's definitely worth it having it 160 because you need the AoE damage. Unless you only care about it for single target, you could keep it at that 120. But uh, it's definitely a very beneficial artifact to have at 160 because of all the avenues that opens up from a DPS perspective. Uh, so hopefully you guys like this series. Uh, if there's not artifact, another artifact in, in DC that you want me to cover, kind of giving an overview of, uh, just let me know in the comments. And then we'll wait till the next series comes out. Take care, guys. Thanks for watching.